The filling table is used as a means of production to be able to provide fixed or unfixed spiral sieves with a wide variety of filler wires in order to be able to adjust the spiral sieves to a wide range of air permeability values. Up to 64 coils of type K250 can be placed on the creel. When retracting the feed unit, the pneumatic cylinder moves upwards and thus holds the filler wire under light tension. In order to ensure smooth insertion of the filler wire, the wire traverses a filler wire fixing box in which it is heated and straightened. The feed unit for the filler wire primarily consists of a pair of transport rollers, a cutting unit and a matrix that divides the wire into the exact pitch of the spirals. The transport roller pair consists of one rubber roller and one hard roller, which are pressed against one another. This ensures that the wire feed is carried out with very little slippage. As soon as the filler wire, i.e. once it has reached the length preset in the controls, has been completely pushed through the sieve, it is cut off by the cutting unit. Using edge detection, the even feeding of the sieve edge is monitored during the entire process. If the sieve slips out of place, it is corrected in the controls, so that the sieve edge always maintains the same distance from the filling matrix.
The laser sensor detects every single pintle wire and counts the spirals until the next unfilled spirals reach the height of the matrix and the necessary feed has been reached in order to continue the filling process without interruption. The controls use the ultrasonic sensor to determine the current diameter of the sieve rolls. This ensures constant sieve tension throughout the entire filling process. The bearing units are used for winding and unwinding, as well as stretching and tensioning of the sieve during the filling process. The user side and the back side of the filling table each have one pair of bearing units equipped with a drive motor on the pintle wire side, whereas the opposite non-driven unit can be moved across the entire length of the joining table to allow for tubes of varying lengths. The bearing units, which are equipped with jaw chucks, can also be moved laterally so that the position of the uncoiled sieve can be laterally corrected via edge detection during the filling process. Hold down clamps are installed on both sides of the filling table that hold the sieves and the compressive forces acting on the sieve in the correct position during the filling process. In addition to the unfilled sieve wound onto a tube with precursors, a second tube also with a precursor is required for winding. The lengths of the tubes used can vary, but must be at least one meter longer than the width of the sieve. The jaw chucks of the front winding roller bearing unit on the user side are set using corresponding square key wrenches, so the diameter of the winding tube with the unfilled sieve fits above the clamping jaws, or into the smaller tube diameters. The movable bearing unit is pushed to the left until the winding tube can be stuck onto the jaw chuck of the drive unit using a crane and traverse. After aligning the sieve roller horizontally and gently applying the clamping jaws, the console can be pushed to the winding tube until the clamping jaws are as deep into the tube as possible. The tube may only lie on the clamping surfaces of the clamping jaws. The locking bore with screwing has to be posted at a clamping jaw. The clamping jaws of the console are now also lightly applied. The jaw chucks are then firmly tightened on both sides. The jaw chuck keys are then inserted into their brackets to prevent damage to the system while being wound up. The larger the distance between the jaw chucks, the larger the diameter of the winding tube has to be. The insertion of the second tube for the rear winding roller unit takes place in the same way as when inserting the unfilled sieve roller at the front of the machine. The entire setup process for sieve filling is carried out in the steps described below. The table module is moved to the rear to allow for unobstructed insertion of the unfilled sieve roller. Insert the sieve roller into the jaw chuck on the operator side. The table module is then moved forward to make the rear bearing units accessible from above for the second winding tube. The second tube, with a precursor, is inserted like the front one. After the table module has been moved into process position, the precursor is wound off of the rear tube and fixed on the table with the hold down clamp and the sieve bracket so the sieve unwound from the front tube can easily be attached to the precursor. Before attaching them, attach the precursor to the table using hold down clamp and sieve holder. After attaching the sieve and the precursor, lift up the hold down clamps again. The sieve is now completely wrapped backwards under tension. Make sure that it is wound without diagonal pull. If necessary, correct with side adjustment.
the complete sieve is now on the rear tube. Before rewinding it again, the sieve must be moved laterally so that the sieve edge matches the table edge. When rewinding, the right edge of the sieve must be precisely aligned with the right edge of the table across the entire length, so the sieve edge always maintains the same distance from the filling template during the filling process. The sieve is now in the start position for the filling process. The wire coils are placed on the intakes of the creel, so the driving pin grips between the ridges and the coil after overcoming the resistance of the barrel springs. The wires are now guided around the deflection roller onto the brake lever and further to the guide eyelets. The wire from the rearmost coil is guided through the first eyelet from the inside, i.e. the wires are pulled in from the back inside to the front outside. Tie the wires in the same level together until the machine entrance, so they cannot fall out of the guides. To insert the filler wires, the drive roller in the drive unit is first moved upwards. The filler wire can now be pulled out of the creel and inserted into the drive unit. For this purpose, the protective panels of the drive unit can be opened or removed. Starting above on the guide side, the filler wires are taken in by the guide eyelets and guided through the separating rakes and the lifting unit. The wires are then fed through the fixing box, the drive unit and the filling template in the same order. After the protective panels of the drive unit have been closed again, the drive roller can be lowered back down. Now press the button Cutter to cut the filler wires to a uniform output dimensions. The wire feed unit is designed as a removable unit, but does not need to be replaced when changing the sieve type or the filler wire. When manufacturing another type of sieve, only the matrix needs to be changed. Remove the cover of the drive unit for this purpose. Then tilt the levers on the sides forward to release the rear matrix. Now pull the matrix out to the back. Tilt the lever back and open the screws on the front of the matrix. Pull these out to complete the matrix replacement. The insertion of the new matrix is done in reverse order. Turn on the controls using the key switch on the control panel. The display now shows the fill menu, Manual. The control panel of the machine control is equipped on both sides with buttons for a two-hand operation. Here you can switch the work lamp on and off. These icons indicate that emergency stop is pressed. General error messages are highlighted in red. Confirm error messages with this button. This error message indicates that the system shutoff was performed by the filler wire monitor. No response from the process monitoring devices within the specified time in the control system. Messages highlighted in yellow show status deviations from the process specifications. Preset parameter time value was exceeded. In order to avoid a loss of quality of the filler wire in the heater, a maximum time is set after which the filler wire may no longer be used. Actual heater temperature does not match the stored maximum or minimum values. Verification required. The platform is not in the process position. Use the direction keys to move it manually to process position. Approach the reference point, for example, after a malfunction. The two-handed symbol indicates that two-hand operation is required for this step. Here you can see that the respective safety covers are open. The limit switch has been initiated. 
numeric keypad for entering parameter values appears when touching a parameter field. By confirming the changed value with Enter, the new value is accepted by the controls. The setting sequence and the filling process in the manual, semi-automatic and automatic modes are described in the following sections. Before starting the setup work, the heating has to be turned on first to allow enough time for heating up. Please note, all settings are made in manual mode and in the setup menu. The sequence of preparation work and the filling process are described below in the appropriate order. Changes in the service menu and in the parameter setting and adjustment menu are usually not required. The menu for setup mode is accessed via the setting button on the main display of the controls. All machine functions required during setup can be executed here, such as moving the table module back and forth, operating the winding drive individually or synchronously, and laterally adjustment. The edge sensor functions are also controlled with the buttons in this menu window. After inserting the unfilled sieve into the front, user side winding roller bearing units and the second winding tube with the precursor in the rear winding roller bearing units are wrapped around the wire and connected to the precursor. All of the functions required for this process can be controlled through this window. After feeding and aligning the unfilled sieve, the job-specific parameters of the sieve are stored in the control. Press the button Screen Parameters to get to the corresponding menu. To change and enter the values, a numeric keypad opens when the corresponding data field is touched. After entering the desired value and confirming with the Enter button, the input is made by the controller. Screen Type Select either a raw sieve, unfixed button, or a heat set sieve, fixed button. Filler wire length. By default, the fill wire length is the wire width with an addition of 0.40 meters, 0.20 meters per sieve side. The function cut long is set to off. When using a high shrinkage filler wire, you can choose from the drop down menu by using the function cut long on and selecting an additional value target length filler wire plus X percent shrinking, according to the percentage specified by the monofilament producer. These extra lengths are taken into account during the feeding process. Number of filler wires. This is the number of filler wires resulting from the filling matrix that is used. During feeding, the filler wires are counted. The controls recognize this when the next filling section is positioned in front of the matrix. Nominal tension value. The sieve tension of the sieve feeding during the filling process can be influenced via the target tensile strength. For sieve widths of fewer than 5 meters, this value can be set to under 50%. For sieve widths of over 5 meters, this value is between 50% and 85%. In feed filler wire. The feed rate of the filler wire can be set here in meters per minute. The rate depends on the size of the filler wire relative to the spiral size. A large filler wire profile relative to spiral size must be inserted at a slower rate, e.g. 10 to 15 meters per minute, than a small profile up to 30 meters per minute. For medium-sized profiles, a value of 20 meters per minute can be set. Heater. Depending on the sieve material, the target temperature for the heater is set here. A value of 160 degrees centigrade for a low shrink material is selected here by default. A value of 170 degrees centigrade for high shrink material can be set. The heater can also be turned on and off here using both buttons. The current actual temperature is also displayed. Displacement unit. Selection buttons for movement for section positioning. Preset V1, slow. Selection for sieve tension related counting errors. Preset V2, fast. Selection for ideal conditions. The corresponding speeds for V1 and V2 can be set in the parameter setting and adjustment menu.
After the sieve has been inserted and positioned for the first filling and the corresponding sieve parameters have been set in the controls, the filling process can be started. Before the first filling, the section counter is set to zero using the reset button. By touching the counter, a window opens in which a given value can be increased or reduced in increments of one. All process steps are executed by the operator in manual mode. This operating mode must always be selected for the first sections in order to change the parameter settings if necessary. Initiate the zero point of the matrix with the wire feed. The feed direction and speed are controlled with the left knob. It can be moved forwards, counterclockwise rotation, and backwards, clockwise rotation. Now move the filler wire unit forward. During the movement of the filler wire unit, the pinch wire hold-down clamp automatically pushes down the wires of the sieve to ensure smooth entry of the filler wire. Now the cord wire is slowly inserted approximately one centimeter into the sieve. The feed rate and direction are controlled by the right knob, counterclockwise rotation, and backward, clockwise rotation. Attention! Move filler wire feed back to a maximum of 10 millimeters, only for making corrections while inserting filler wire. If the cord wire is in the correct position, it can be inserted into the sieve at a higher speed until the preset filler wire length is reached. The feed rate is regulated with the right knob. Furthermore, you will see the already filled sections here. Now cut the filler wire with the button Cutter. Lower the hold down with the button Hold Down Filler Wire. Reverse the filler wire unit using the button Filler Wire Back. After the process has been completed, lift the hold down again using the button Hold Down Filler Wire. If all settings ensure an error-free process when necessary corrections have been made after the filling of the first sections, the operating mode set to either semi-automatic or automatic. After process start in manual mode, semi-automatic mode can be selected if the filling process is error-free. To select it, press the selection button in the manual menu to change the mode to semi-automatic. The process steps are essentially identical to those described under manual. However, the individual steps are activated sequentially using buttons. Several machine functions are sometimes summarized in one step, step 5. The step buttons are hidden after the step has been completed, so that only the remaining steps are visible. After completing a filling cycle, all buttons are displayed again. If you need to go back a step, you can do that with the button Stop Back. After process starts in manual mode, automatic mode can be selected if the filling process is error-free. Change selection button in manual mode to automatic. The process start is triggered by the button Start Automatic Mode. The process steps are identical to those described under manual. In contrast, the individual steps are completely automatically processed in succession. The start of the next cycle is also carried out using the controls. A shutdown occurs either in the event of a disruption when the preset number of filling sections has been reached or by manually pressing the button Unselect Automatic Mode. In addition to manufacturer contact information for the machine and the controls, the controls can be set to various different languages here, only with a password possible. Before cleaning the touch screen, the screen's switching functions are deactivated with the button Clean Screen. This is necessary to avoid accidentally starting the machine when cleaning. A white screen with a diagram bar showing the remaining cleaning time will be displayed for about 30 seconds. Also in this menu, the Service Area Parameters button can be activated to make parameter settings and adjustments.
Press the Selection button in the Service menu to switch to the Parameter Settings and Adjustments menu. In the Password Protected Parameter Settings and Adjustments menu, the basic parameters of the controls can be changed if necessary. Target Value Potentiometer Filler Wire Roller. The internal value is fixed, only necessary in case of replacement of the potentiometers or if changing manufacturer's specifications. Target value potentiometer winding rollers. This internal value is also fixed, only required in case of replacement of the potentiometers or if changing manufacturer's specifications. Filler wire counterfactor. The meter factor of the filler wire is a fixed value and does not need to be changed. Zero point filler wire matrix. This value represents the distance between filler wire cutting edge and front edge matrix. No changes are required here. Pre-switching. Slow feed of the filler wire. Slower feed before reaching preset filler wire length. The value of 50 mm is recommended during this stage. Retract semi automatic sieve. Slow movement of the filler wire into the sieve after insertion. The recommended value is 10 mm. Fast speed WR automatic. This speed value is for the pre selection V2 fast. It is recommended to set this value to 8%. Slow speed WR automatic. This speed value is for the pre-selection V2 slow. The recommended value is 3%. Difference deviation target, actual temperature of heating. Determine the tolerance range for actual temperature deviations relative to preset target temperature. The target value should be set at 7 degrees centigrade. Maximum holding time for filler wire in heater. To avoid a reduction in quality of the filler wire in the running heater during idle time, a maximum time of 900 seconds is set, after which an error message is displayed indicating that the filler wire may no longer be used. Use the winding menu to rewind. If you need to secure the pintle wire against slipping out, once the filling process is finished, the left sieve edge can be welded with an edge welding machine. This takes place in the course of rewinding of the front pipe. After filling the last section, the precursor end section is separated from the sieve by removing the corresponding pintle wire and wound onto the front winding tube. The precursor is then secured with Velcro straps or tape. Analogous to the description of the setup process, the front winding tube is now removed with its accompanying precursor from the machine. The empty winding tube for shipping can now be inserted into the filling table and clamped with the jaw chucks. After lifting the hold down clamp, the filled sieve is wound forward until it can be attached to the front winding tube with tape. After the first rotations on the tube under tension, the sieve can then be completely wound to the front tube. Before the finished sieve is removed from the machine, it must be wrapped with foil or secured with Velcro. The sieve roller can be removed again using a crane and traverse. The welding of the sieve edge takes place during the rewinding on the front winding tube in the winding menu. For this purpose, an electric heating rail per pneumatic cylinder parallel to sieve edge is lowered onto the sieve. At the same time, the wire feed is started. First of all, the hold down filler wire is positioned so that the heating rail is approximately 20 to 30 millimeters inside the sieve edge. The welding device mounted on the hold down filler wire is shortly switched on at the control unit and the rotary control is set to the value of 7, for example for PET. The recommended guideline values for the settings in the sieve parameters menu are 16% for the nominal tension value and 19 meters per minute for the filler wire feed rate. As soon as the wire feed starts, the heating rail is activated by manual operation of the pneumatic valve lowered to the moving sieve. When the precursor and wire interface have been reached, the heating rail is raised again. Afterwards, the device can be switched off again.
In order to ensure error-free operation, the following cleaning work must be performed at least once a week. Vacuum the surfaces and cable channels. Clean the table surface, the rakes in front of the heater, and the cord wire lifting unit. The acrylic covers are best cleaned with gentle cleaning agent and a soft cloth. The mounting axles on the creel and their guides must also be cleaned. In order to ensure error-free operation and machine safety, the following maintenance operation must be performed regularly. Check the drive unit and lubricate the grease nipples with fluid grease. If the filler wires feed unevenly, check the rubber roller above and replace it if necessary. Check cover guides on the bearing units for firmness and remove the screws if necessary. Finally, check the foam rubber pads on the hold-down clamps and replace them if they are worn out.